of Sister Carlos will come and read the 23rd number of the Psalms, John chapter, chapter 14, verse number one. Our Father and our God, you are our Lord and you are our Master. Certainly you are the great I am. We thank you for being God. Thank you for who you are, for what you certainly mean to all of us. We in times like today you know the death of a loved one is certainly never, never easy. It brings all kinds of emotions and leaves at times some unanswered questions. We are touched with the feeling of sorrow, yet we are filled with your promises that you will never leave us, nor will you forsake us. We who are your people on today need to once again experience your, your comfort. And we need to know once again that you certainly are with us to the very, the very end. We ask, O oh Father, that you would hear our, our prayer and comfort family and friends and all of these loved ones who have gathered and assembled on this day. Comfort Deacon Robinson's wife, comfort his daughter, comfort this host of loved ones, friends and families, families and friends who have gathered and assembled here on this day, even touch Christian Hope Missionary Baptist Church family whom he dedicated so many years of service. And Father, it's in you that on this day that we put our trust. We trust you with our whole heart. We lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways we acknowledge you, and you shall direct our land. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the pleasures. Thank you for the very fond memories, the joys, and the laughter down through the years. Most of all, we thank you for this faithful son whose body now lays before us. We thank you, Father, on this day. And we pray in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. And we say amen. 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 Sister Carlos, would you come? Amen. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. John, the 14th chapter, the first verse. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. These are the words, they have been blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. This time we will have um, Christian Revolutionary Baptist Church Choir sing, and after that it will be followed by acknowledgments of calls and resolutions that will come from First Lady Bay.
Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. That's our best response to reflect that God yes. can change things. Yes. 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 Are there any other resolutions that I am not holding? Does anybody have any resolutions out there that I am not holding? Okay. Mothers and Deaconess Board, Christian Hope Missionary Baptist Church, will you stand if you can? Resolution in loving memory of Deacon I.C. Robinson. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John chapter 14, verse 27. Whereas Deacon I.C. Robinson has faithfully served in this life as a husband, father, and deacon to this great church with great history, and whereas Deacon Robinson was the dear and beloved husband of our ministry sister, Deaconess Gloria Robinson, and whereas Deacon Robinson was a loving example of what a caring and devout husband should be as he demonstrated when caring for Deaconess Robinson, yeah. and whereas Deacon Robinson in this life began and left his legacy by blessing others through his namesake scholarship, and whereas Deacon Robinson faithfully served in his role as deacon through and until his health failed him. Be it resolved that Deacon I.C. Robinson has answered the call of the master on April 9th, 2022 and left this life to a life everlasting. And be it also resolved that the Christian Hope Mothers and Deaconess Board stand with and are continually praying for our sister, Deaconess Gloria Robinson, and her family during this, their time of bereavement. For the scripture tells us, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew chapter five, verse four. Finally, be it resolved that a copy of this resolution will be placed into the church archives and a copy given to the family. Respectfully submitted by Sister Michelle Houston, president of Mothers and Deaconess, and Pastor Tyrone Lee Bailey, pastor. This resolution is from Christian Hope Missionary Baptist Church. Will the members, except for the family, please stand? In the providential will of God, he has brought to a close the life of I.C. Robinson. The officers and members of Christian Hope Missionary Baptist Church, Chicago, Illinois, feel that it is befitting to express our sympathy to the family of our faithful and beloved member, Deaconess Gloria Robinson during the passing of her husband. We resolved that I.C.'s life was not in vain because he touched the lives of many. Know that God has a purpose for all his creations. The fulfillment of that purpose is pleasing in his sight. Therefore, be it resolved that there will be a vacancy in the lives of his loved ones and friends, but the Lord can and will fill that vacancy with his love, his joy, and his peace. So we commend you to him who knows best and will always do right. Be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to him who never makes a mistake. We pray with and for you, the family, and ask that you remember these encouraging words. No matter what your trials are or how big your mountain seems, the Lord is there to see you through. He'll go to all extremes. So if your cross seems hard to bear and you know not what to do, the one who loves you most of all will be there to see you through. Be it resolved on this 23rd day of April in the year of our Lord, 2022, that the Deacon Board, Sunday School Department, Usher Ministry, Music Ministry, Mothers and Deaconess Board, Trustees, leadership and members of Christian Hope express our sympathy to the entire family as they mourn the passing of I.C. Robinson. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy kept in the church archives, humbly submitted by the Reverend Tyler Lee Bailey Pastor and Sister Linda Wilson, our church clerk. Acknowledgement. There is a letter And it says, special tribute, be not burdened with time of sorrow. I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full 
I say with much good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief. Don't leave in it now, as I do grief. Sam, I am going to miss you dearly. I thank God for allowing us to spend 51 years together. Love always, Gloria Robinson. Although you are no longer here, we take the time to remember, honor, and give God thanks for your legacy. Love always, your family. The family of Isaac Charles Robinson wishes to express their sincere thanks to each of you, both far and near, for your company words, prayers, and condolences during this time of bereavement. May God bless and sustain each of you. Just for a moment, I know it's not prayed here in the order of service, but can we thank God for the life of Heavy 
Chicago. There were days that he was 
was not feeling well, but he never showed it. And so he said that in my heart, I, I began to hate. I said, my uncle is real in pain because he never complains about pain. And then um, the next thing I know, he's gone on to be with the Lord. But he will always have a special place in my heart and my family. He was a second dad to me and um, and to my friends. And I remember the last time we were over there, my friend Randy, who my uncle loved so much, he said, Randy, do you mind taking the garbage out for me? He said, no, sir. He said, yes, sir. Real quickly. And did it with, yes, yes. with, uh, with speed. And so um, I would do anything for my uncle. My friends, who often took made sacrifices to come with me yes. to Chicago to make sure that uh, whatever my uncle needed, we were there to support that. And Auntie Gloria, uncle lived a well life. He loved the Lord, and now he doesn't have to worry about getting air for his lungs. Amen. Because the Lord is the air that he breathes. And so I say to you, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might to see death and to run into all of you that are grieving. That God, He got us, and He's going to carry us too. So be encouraged. Thank you. 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 Uh, he's gone now and gone to eternal life and uh, God bless you. Thank you. I just want to thank God for saying thank you, man. he was the first person in my life that I've seen what a real man looked like. I mean, going, going to the house and going out there, you know, knowing him, I mean, he was, he showed us what a man looked like. I used to spend a night of the weekend over there. And we would see him getting up three o'clock in the morning, going to work, he was out in the snow. You know, when Sam showed me what a man looked like. Sam and Glory would show me what a godly home supposed to look like. And I thank God for him. I thank God he, he had him in my home, put him in my life and what he did for other people. So thank you, Lord, for Sam. And, and thank you, God. I bless you all. And I pray that everything go well for you all and let him know, you know, be happy because we know where he is now and he's comforted now. And thank you, Lord, for him. Well, you know, uh, as the gentleman just said, Mr. Robinson really demonstrated to us. Um, I grew up with success in the Robinson family, grown up, CW. He was like a 90 person of this thing. And uh, he set a really good example for a bunch of young men. I lost my father when I was very young. And uh, he was a great example of manhood, uh, stability. Um, I thought he could fix anything. I didn't yes. think he could fix But he came out there in the garage first, and I'm like, you know, one day, uh, Sylvester, we were, we were chatting, um, and uh, I'm going to sit down uh, about his car had broken down. And uh, he didn't know that the car was going to be fixed. So Mr. Robinson pulled the car in the garage and he said, Two, three hours later, the car was up. Like, so we just uh, just glory to God. He was a blessing to us. Uh, all of you guys who just came as young men, they really set a good example. And then I'm a deacon today, you know, and you know, other things because of his sacrifices and his uh, example for us. And I'm grateful to the family, and uh, I'm just much appreciated. Thank you. I'm a friend of Mr. Brother Robinson, Carl Brother Robinson. I've been him to Brother Hines. They were good friends. And I can't be a friend behind Brother Hines, but he was a guy who he call you, check on you, you know, never take nothing about it. I didn't know him all, but I know the years I know him. As the brother was saying, he showed you how to be a man. Now I thank God for men like Brother Robinson. He did with a man then they you know, did. Relationship we had, we like to be doing stuff for a hundred years, but he just showed me how to be a man and how to care, so care about another, another man. Just to say hello, how you doing? And I'll miss him. And you know, I, I just thank God for that brother like to him. He, he showed me how to be men. Yes, yes. And, you know, he didn't show any, but 
All I can say, thank God for some people like Brother Robinson. How excited is everyone? I want to reference God who is the head of all of my mind. And especially under the globe here, Ron Day. God bless you on today. My name is Sherman Everton. I'm the son of C.O. Evans, who was Uncle Sam's twin sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to, people have come forth and they have told me about a, a man, his character, his integrity. <laughs> he was the last that we had to look forward to. He was one that we could call for spiritual, godly advice. Amen. He was the strength that was left for our family. Mm -hmm. You could call him anytime. And he was there, he would answer. He had this calmness about him that if you call him with a situation, he would ease your situation and make things better. Uncle Sam, I just can remember, I heard the gentleman talk about how hard working he was, but I can remember back when I was a kid and how this man would go to work, how all those uncles would go to work and show us what it was to be a man, not to be afraid to go out and work. CW, I love you, man. You shared your, your dad with all of us. He was a man that not only demanded respect, but he gave respect. Yes, yes, yes. And that's what made him so special. Mm -hmm. There was a fear, but it was a loving fear. Yeah. One of the family, one family members said that if Uncle Sam called, and you knew that was his number, you're going to answer that phone. <laughs> and you're going to have as much love and respect that we showed toward him. But we know that he gave us the same love and respect. And I'm not going to leave this for you long. I just want to say, Gloria, Rhonda, we love you. Yes. I'm going to always pray for you. Yes, yes. May God just keep you and give you the peace and the strength that you need to the rest of the family. Yes. We lost our last icon in our family. But he showed us something. Yes, that if we love one another, we pray for one another, we support one another. We might not see each other, but know in our hearts and minds that we love one another. And may the peace of God be with all of us. Amen. Amen.
that we're all of us going to miss Uncle Sam for being there for his family, because he loves his family. Yes, he's going he to make sure he calls me. If you don't call him, he's going to call you. That's right. Everybody right. Right. He's going to call him. That's right. So, I just, just want to say, don't miss Uncle Sam. Amen. I'm bringing greetings from the 9100 block of Justine and to uh, Mrs. Robinson and to the Robinson family. I just want to say to hold on to God will change your hands. He was a spectacular, religious, respectful, dignified person. And he is truly, truly, and I want to say that there is no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. We can make, we can make it. You for night, but joy will come in the morning. Yes. 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 I am Samantha, formerly known as Precious. I am a granddaughter, and that's my papa over there. My papa like me. And one thing I can do. Satisfied. So I got a good story. Um, it was December 2020. My papa said, Samantha, I want some of them children. And I was like, okay, papa. So my papa gave me $25. And I went to every store in Chicago for the children. They have no children, y'all. So it took a year for me to get those children, but this past Christmas, which is also my papa's birthday, I took them a very nice meal. But all he wanted was the children. He just came through the door and he said, Ron, throw the children in the microwave. I don't even care about the food. But I just wanted to give a good story about my papa. I love my papa. He called me monthly. I'm going to miss those stop. Love you too, Sam. Love you, Sam. or known as Junior, or Little Man, not so little no more. <laughs> Just want to sing a little bit for you, that's okay. I wish I can tell you just what I want, and you give it to me just like but the truth of the man of what I want just might hurt me, and you won't let me go out like that. You know my end before my beginning, calculated blessings down to the penny. So I cry to you tell me, let it go and be. Cause oh Lord, love and joy is what's best for me. Thank you. Obviously, I've talked with how to be a man. Obviously, I've taught him how to be a man. Obviously, I've taught me how to stand up my own and accept my roles and my rights. 
ja, wäre schön auskommen, wenn erst einmal Tochter das wäre. Das erste Hinten von mir, das Kind prägen. Ja, muss man ja doch wohl nicht tun. Some kind of way. He made way in my pocket was empty to fill it back up. Amen. Some kind of way I made a way when his pocket was empty. Uh -huh. But he always told me one thing. He said, Brother Foreman, don't take your talent in the grave. Yeah. No, he was calm. He, 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 he taught me how to calm. Yes, yes, yes. And that's why I can help now. Because I, I love the work. And one day I decided to work unsafe upon a ladder that held a body up. Uh, he's a brother for me, a hard worker. Yeah. That's why we got along so good, because we both were hard workers. Yes. And he loved this family. Yeah. He loved this family. He worked hard for his family. He said, you, You're a hard working man. He said, You don't find too many young men work hard as you. I said, Brother, I got it from you. And the last time I, I, I talked to him in the hospital, I said, how you doing, bro? He said, boy, I ain't doing too good. I said, you doing, you doing good, bro. See, he knew his time was getting close. We all got to cross that bridge one day. He said, I'm gonna stick around here a little bit long. Ain't nobody gonna be able to come to my family. <laughs> I said, Well, what you talking about? 
I said, this, this, and he's looking down now, brought his houses, he put wood pretty full. Yes, yes. So somebody here, we here. And the encourage the family to, to stay strong. If you don't know the Lord, get to know the Lord. Yes. Get to know Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, yes. Ain't nobody perfect. I'm not a perfect man, but I'm a man that believed Amen. that Jesus died and rose. Yeah, yeah. And when he got out the grave, Russ said he had all the power. I didn't see him get out the grave, but I believe he got out the grave. As long as you believe, he got up. See, they made one mistake when they got up. They stood him up. They let him uh, lay him down. He went alone. But when, but, but, but when they stood him up, all the time. And if y'all stay strong, I, I know what you're going through. I've been there. I need to say it right here. I've been there. Mother, father, brother, cousin, everybody. You stay encouraged. Stay in the will of God. Quiet, but he knew what he was doing. 
when you ask him something, he did that. He was faithful. There was time that uh, we, when he was ill, we, we, we wouldn't see him as much in the church, but he showed up. He was here. He was here with his Bible. He was, he was here when he became. And like I said, he, he was quiet, but he's going to be missed by all of us here and by Christian Paul. That's as well. So Deacon Robinson went from labor to rest. Good hands. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, Prince Noah. Families and friends. My name is Deacon Jackson. I just want to say Deacon Robinson was a good man. I know him for quite a few years. His wife, his daughter was raised up with my daughters. And uh, they was a good family. Deacon Robinson was always there, willing to help. You call him, he would be there. If there's something he couldn't do, he would bring somebody to do it or recommend someone. And I just want to say to the family, that we're going to miss Deacon Robinson. I know you're going to miss my will too. Because we would chat on the phone all the time and the last thing I would say to him, if you need me for anything, that's God, I'll be there. I want to say that to the family. Uh, Sister Robinson, if you need me, I'm here. Just call. Yeah. Like Christian you know, said, let us make Jesus' name famous. Yeah.
inside of you. Promises of God. 
I like the words of Maya Angelou, who once wrote, and I quote, I've learned that people will forget what you say. People will forget uh, what you did. But petty people will never forget how you made them feel. End quote. So if you look around the room, you will see some, maybe not all of the people whom Deacon Robinson called to feel loved and to feel welcome. People with whom he had great and enjoyable conversations with over the years. There are people here today who will never forget how he stepped in to help in their time of, of need. Deacon yeah. Robinson was that, that person and was that kind of person that made others not just feel good, but also made them feel important and valued. We are here today, Robinson family, to, to show you uh, through our presence, our support, and our prayers, and our comments, and our resolutions, and our songs, and our words to encourage you all on this day. Uh, would you again on today thank God for allowing Deacon Robinson to pass our way and let the family know that you are here to encourage them. Now I need to give a, a word um, uh, from the word of, of the Lord. That word on today is found in Ezekiel chapter 37. Uh, I'll read verses 1 through 6, then I'll drop down to verses 12 and uh, go through verse 14. Again, that is Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 6, again verses 12 through 14. And it says, the hand of the Lord was upon me, carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Verse number 12 says, Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold all my people, I will make your open grave, open your graves, and cause you to come up out of your graves, and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves. O oh, my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and ye shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. And I shall place in you, place in you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord God, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Amen. For um, a homiletical handle, I want to entitle this The Breath of God. The Breath of God. Class, Lord's word is already blessed. Yeah. Amen. 
standing um, in, a, in a valley full of dry, dead human bones is no abstract philosophical encounter with death. God had brought Ezekiel, his prophet, to this grim graveyard as a prophet balanced himself on the broken skulls and sharp rib bones. God took him by the hand and led him around as if to make sure that he didn't miss any of the bones. Death filled all the senses as Ezekiel surveyed the grim reaper's playground. It had been over 10 years since Ezekiel, his family and others had been marched off into exile from Judah to Babylon. He watched his, his whole world and his whole culture unravel under the rule of Babylon. Life in a, a foreign country cut off from the native culture, religion, and customs. Must have been a lonely and hopeless experience. Yet, my brothers and my sisters, Ezekiel's role as a prophet was to remind his people that God was still in charge and that God was still at work. Amen. Amen. God's voice uh, broke through the silence. When he said or asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? Standing knee deep in dry, white, bleach human bones, Ezekiel is asked this question. As we listen to the scripture reading, there is an honorable sense of empty nothingness. Well, a white, bland canvas of despair covered in colorless paint fills the sea. From where there is death, there is nothing. There is no smell, there is no color, there is no movement and no breath in this place of hopelessness. What faith, my brothers and sisters, it takes Ezekiel to, to answer, to, to muster the words as he remained tactful and he responded back to the Lord by saying, Oh Lord God, you know. Uh, God tells Ezekiel to, to prophesy mm -hmm. and to tell uh, the bones that God's breath will come into them. Uh, these uh, brittle, dry, dry bones will live and be covered by sinews and by flesh. In response to God's living, living breath, Ezekiel hears a rattling noise as the bones uh, is joined bone to bone. Next, God tells the prophet to call upon the four winds from where God's breath will come to bring these bones to life as the restored people of Israel. All of this happened, brothers and sisters, because God uh, said it so, and Ezekiel dared to believe. I ask you on today, do you believe? Do you believe that there is a life-giving breath of God that will eventually open the graves of the dead? Do you believe? Yes. For death seems so powerful. Death seems so permanent when you find yourself hopelessly touched by its cold hand. Death has convinced so many people that where death is, they will say there is no God. There are many people asking the question, is God real? If so, does God have power over, over death? So, so many on that day and so many in this day will answer those questions by saying no. So many people believe that God has abandoned them to their enemies. 
things. The scriptures are very clear and forceful in times of crisis, in the challenges that many people face in the world. They feel the absence of God in their pain, in their loss, in their brokenness, and in the time of death, it happens in all of our lives. Human beings, we people, we, we get hurt and oftentimes feel struggles uh, to sense life in a death feel world. No matter where you are, hospital, you can, you can be in a nursing home, you can be driving down, down the street, it feels and seems like death is all around. As a matter of fact, uh, the psalmist said, we're in the valley. I wish somebody talked to me of the shadow of death, but we have no reason Help me here, to fear no evil because God is with us. And God doesn't, God doesn't casually drop by and pat us on the back and don't he, he don't tell us that everything is going to be Okay, as a matter of fact, I remember the words that says, in this life, you will have some trouble. Am I talking to anybody in this room? But if you ain't had no trouble, if my mama was here on the day, they'd just say, keep on, keep on living. Somebody know what I'm talking about you. Most of us, sometimes in our life, never mind if I preach to you, have to look over a, a valley of dry bones and waited anxiously for the Lord to show up. Yeah. However, he didn't arrive on time and he didn't come when you wanted him to. Uh, listen, brothers and sisters, sometimes these dry bones may be uh, a dream never fulfilled. Yeah. You pleaded, you worked hard, you, you struggled and you didn't even pray for God to help and for God to intervene. Yet, you still fell short. Am I talking to somebody in this room? Uh, these dry bones may be a broken marriage. Everything was so wonderful. Everything was so, so romantic at your wedding. Only to become brittle and broken. Little by little, death began to consume your relationship. You called out to God to come and to help you in your time of counseling, to help you when you pray. You ask for help even from your church, but it seemed like everyone was too late as you walked around, walked away from the Lord, you would divorce papers in your head. Talk about some dry bones. Hey, maybe on today these dry bones could be a faith that is going to Because you watch your child die, you watch uh, your loved one die from a, a horrible disease. You have seen people go from right state of mind to find them later in life with dementia and Alzheimer's. You, you watch God, God will 
see to it that one day here in the text that Israel will return to their, their own land. The people of God one day will be resurrected into a new creation as, as the new Israel. Listen here, thus saith the Lord, I'm, I'm gone, he says, to open your graves, that old son, and bring you up from your graves, oh my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Ezekiel, Ezekiel knew, and he believed that God's breath would bring hope and give life in day situation. God, God, God gave life when he breathed the breath of life into the nostrils of man and man became a living soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, gave, he gave life when Jairus' daughter had died. He brought her back to life. Yeah, he breathed into you joy and peace. He breathed into you salvation and deliverance. He breathed into you love and kindness and he breathed into you life. That he is ever everlasting. The breath, the breath of God that raised Jesus from the dead will raise you too. So y'all miss y'all shout and come back around again. That same breath of God that raised Jesus from the dead will raise you too. For on that Friday when Jesus was in the place of the dead, that place called God, God, that place of the skull, that place that we call Calvary, that yes. therefore it had won again. Oh, but I can't stop on Friday. I can't stop on Saturday because of that. I'm not something from the grave open and eternally death was defeated by Jesus Christ who had been resurrected and the promise his followers, guess what? Eternal, eternal life. Yes. 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 The very, very breath of God and Jesus Christ had defeated death forever. <laughs> listen, listen. Yes. Defeated death yes, yes. Oh. forever. I know I got some educated people <laughs> in this room on the day. Yes. Got more degrees uh -huh. on your wall than I got inside my office. Yes. I know I got some intellectual folk in here. Say, well, Look here, preacher, if that is defeated, then why are we here on the day mourning the death of Deacon Al C. Robinson? Listen, listen, listen. Let me talk to the intellectual folks on, on today. Uh, but, but I feel a need to tell you on today that this is not the end of the story. about Deacon, Deacon Robinson. Uh, it, it, it was not really a well-kept kept secret, but, but it was something personal about uh, Deacon Robinson. He, he, he is, it, it was personal about, about Deacon Robinson and there was not a well-kept secret. And that was this, that he knew him who was Moses' bush on fire. Yes. He knew him that was King David's shepherd. Yes. He knew him that was Jeremiah Yes. Kept him loving God. Yes. Kept him loving 
his family. Yes. Loving the place, the church where he came to worship. He loved people in general all because he Talk about how it was that he, he, he helped you. He, he, he did steal some things in you to become the man and the person that you are. But I want to tell you on, on today, don't miss the point that he did all of those things because he had a connection with you. He wants you to have that kind of connection too. Some folk run up here. Heartbeat say, I want to see so and so again. I want to see so and so again, and I want to see so and so again. That's all right. Yeah. But see, here's the difference. You got to know when you stand and you say, I want to see so and so again. You got to know where you go. Because everybody been talking about they going to hell. They ain't going. And let me tell you on the day that when you get that, you're going to be surprised that you
today. However, I must tell you on today that there is an appointed time that the breath of life will enter these bodies once again.
Fiora, you're at this.
No, I, I was going to say. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going to. No, we got, when I get down, down to the door. Yeah, the door. Yeah, we're going to take it out. We're going to put her in the chair. Yeah. 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 We're going to put her in the chair. Thank you, man. As his pastor, we will come to lay within his cast on today. The book speaks of the ministry of a Baptist deacon. It was years ago that Deacon Robinson came to me because his health was failing. And he felt that he should turn in his license and ordination papers and no longer be a deacon of this church. And I said to him, You will remain a deacon of the church until your work yes. is done. Yes, yes, yes. It's on this day. I can say with firm assurance that his work is done. Amen. Five ladies would come and receive the flowers. And if you have at least six pallbearers, 